Hello Eagles, you are flipping in fifth with me, Mrs. G. Today we're gonna to be talking about topic 14, lesson two. And today's learning target is, I can collect and record data in frequency tables and line plots and interpret the results. Today's vocabulary words, we've got quite a few. The first one is survey. That is a list of questions used to gather information. Data, a collection of facts and sample data from a group of people, not everyone. So go ahead and pause the video and write those in. We have two more types of vocabulary words, but instead of having you write a definition, I would like you to copy down what they look like. The first one is a frequency table. And what you'll notice about a frequency table is that it has two columns. It has, for this case, if we're talking about the number of pets people have in their home, the first column would be the number of pets, and the second column would be the number of students. So in other words, reading this frequency table, we would know that three students don't have any pets. Four students have one pet. How many students have two pets? That's right, six. And how many students have three pets? Two. That is a frequency table, and that's one way to show data. Another way to show data we talked about yesterday, and that's the line plot. Remember, that's when you show data on a number line, and each X represents the number of pets in this case, and the numbers down here, or I'm sorry, the numbers down here are the number of pets, and the numbers here are the number of people that have that many pets, okay? So a line plot and a frequency table, both of these are showing the same exact data. They're just showing us in different ways. Go ahead and pause the video and write both of those down. Okay, so here is a question that I surveyed teachers for. And the question was, how old should kids be before getting a cell phone? So here we collected some data. So some teachers said eight, some teachers said 13, some said 10. So we need to figure out how are we going to interpret the data here and how are we gonna organize it in a way that makes it easier to show our results. Well, first of all, just by looking at this data, is it possible to know what the youngest age that respondents thought a kid should get a cell phone? Well, it is, because we can go through and we can look and say, what number here out of all these numbers is the least? And we know that that number is eight. What is the oldest age that respondents thought a kid should get a cell phone? Well, if you go through each one, you're just looking for the highest number and the highest number would be 16. But there's a much easier way to be able to answer questions about data if you actually get them organized either in a frequency table or a line plot. So here's a line plot, and we are going to plot all of the data lines that we saw over here by adding an X under the number for each one that we see. So here we have an eight, so there's our eight. Here we have a 10, here we have a 12, here we have a 10, so we'll put another X on top of that. Oh, here we have an 11. Here we have a 10. Oh, we have another 11. There's a 13. Another 10. There's 12. Another 10. And 16. Hmm, okay. So now we have a pretty good line plot that can tell us a lot of questions just easily by glancing. but first question is, what age did most respondents think a kid should be able to get a cell phone? Hmm, what do you think? Most people thought the best age for kids to get a cell phone, you're right, it would be 10. And it would be 10 because that's the one that was most frequently answered, has the most X's. What is this called? Does anybody remember what the 16 would be? This was one of our vocabulary words yesterday. If you said outlier, you'd be correct. Remember, an outlier is something in the data that is far away from the grouping. So this is the furthest away, so it would be considered an outlier. So how else can we organize and display the data? Well, we could draw a frequency table. Here's how we would do it, using the same data that we gathered before. So here we have one column that shows the age of the child that respondents think a child should be before getting a cell phone. And over here is the number of teachers who responded with that answer. So eight, we had one teacher say eight. Nine, well, no teachers said nine, so a zero goes there. 
So 10, well, that was five teachers thought 10 was a good age. 11 would be two. 12 years old, two teachers thought that was a good age. 13, just one. And then we have our outlier down here, which was one teacher thought that 16 years old was the age that you should be before getting the cell phone. So how many teachers were surveyed? So how can you figure that out? Because I don't see that in the table anywhere. Well, what you would do is you'd actually go through and count all of the numbers in this column because these are the number of teachers who responded saying this particular answer. So if we added everything up here, we would have 12. So 12 teachers were surveyed. Another re way to do that is to go ahead and just count our data. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So 12 teachers were surveyed. Now it's your turn. Go ahead and use this frequency table here to answer these five questions. Make sure that you draw an actual line plot showing this data so it should match up perfectly down for number five. And then pause the video and come back and check your answers. All right, coming back in five, four, three, two, one. All right, here are tonight's answers. How many people responded to the survey about the number of CDs that were owned? Well, 31 people responded. We got that number by adding up this column. How many people own more than seven CDs? So it's not seven CDs, it's more than seven. So just nine or 10 CDs. So we would add 12 and eight and get 20. This question says, how many CDs do most people own? So here we're looking, what is the largest number in this column? And the answer would be nine. They own nine, most people own nine CDs. How many people owned 10 CDs or less? Well, 10 or less would count for everything, so we know it would be 31. And then here's an example for a line plot. So we have our number line, we have all of our data points, six, seven, nine, and 10, and then we have an X going up for each one. So for six, we had five X's. For seven CDs, we had six X's. For nine CDs, we had 12 X's. And for 10 CDs, we had eight X's. Okay, make sure you've checked your work and you wrote how many you got correct out of five. Be honest, it's not for a grade, but be sure to write down your self-reflection. Could you teach a friend? Do you think you got it or do you still have no idea? And also be sure to write down any questions that you still have. Hope you have a great night. Look forward to showing you more about data tomorrow. See you later. Bye-bye.